Welcome back to the New Rockstars Debrief. I'm Eric Voss. Joining me today are Philip Molina and Sam Basher. Hello, this is Sam. Thank you for having me, gang. And hello, this is Philip. Thanks for having me, fam. (laughs) Thanks for having me. I'm happy to have. Uh, Well, we finally got an official Avengers Endgame synopsis to dissect for you guys. Uh, Plus some picks from Game of Thrones Season 8, the final season, and some interesting theories about Star Wars Heaven. I thought we'd go there. Thought they didn't believe in Heaven. Heaven. Interesting. Also, uh, it's a, a little Walking Dead tease, right? Oh, yeah. You guys have been asking about an update about The Walking Dead. Uh, and our coverage of we, it. And our coverage. We haven't forgotten about you guys. So we got a big, fun announcement for you guys coming later in the video or the podcast, depending on how you're getting this. Yeah, speaking so of, around. do remember that you can enjoy this as a podcast. Again, our faces, you don't have to deal with them. A lot of you guys are actually already doing it. We've gotten some really great feedback so far, and we're excited to keep going. Uh, so get it wherever you get your podcasts. So we would extra love it if you got it on the Himalaya app Mm -hmm. because they're direct supporters of our podcast. So it's really great. Thanks so much. Yeah. All right. Let's get started, guys. So here's the deal. Uh, We got an official synopsis for Avengers Endgame. Uh, We were able to piece together what the story might be. Uh, We've made several videos about what the story might be. Uh, But here is an official synopsis released, and this is what it says. After the devastating events of Avengers Infinity War, the universe is in ruins due to the efforts of the mad titan, Thanos. With the help of remaining allies, the Avengers must assemble once more in order to undo Thanos' actions and restore order to the universe once and for all, no matter what consequences may be in store. Now, I still want to see it despite that voice you just used. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think some people want to see it more because of the voice they used. Uh, uh, answer our surveys. <laughs> <laughs> mm, okay, let's get to the analysis here. There's three words that I think are important. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rest, throw them away. Ignore them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only these three. The <laughs> yeah. Ampersand. Yeah. <laughs> any, any prepositions are useless. <laughs> Undo and restore are the first two. Okay, so that's, mm-hmm. that's interesting. The first confirm, like the OG Avengers, may be getting involved in some time travel or alternate realities in order to bring back the dusted. I mean, think undo, restore. Like undo, it makes it sound like... Photoshop menu items. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. How will the right Avengers click. control Z Thanos' snap? I think that's right. That's undo, isn't it? Depends it, on if you're on a PC or a Mac. Apple Z. There you go. Control Z. The, like, the idea of undo makes it sound like, yeah, prevent. We're going back before this happened or in mm-hmm. a reality where this hasn't happened and make it so that we have like a clean slate uh, as a result of our actions. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it definitely sounds like we're stored from backup, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which I haven't been saving the universe. Uh, who well, been a minute? You got to do that to the yeah. cloud. Have it control on and or yeah, Apple yeah. Z, uh, S that right? No oh, man. The Ooh, yeah. I don't think you've used a computer recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't use computers. I do everything by hand. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, that's uh, it, maybe there's a simulated reality that we're that we're hinting at, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, control. But in all honesty, right? So yeah, time travel confirmed. Time travel confirmed it used to uh, just i know we've talked about the alternate reality thing but you're like oh start a new reality for these people and it's like oh that's a nightmare because that means the other one still exists where I everyone's that dead like, that's I my favorite that one. One. yeah it sounds like they're not one. doing it based on undo and restore but i want the cronenberg universe version. right yeah yeah i want to jump to every possible ramification and consequence it is played out somewhere and everyone dies in some other timeline well there's also the word consequences some people are pointing out that uh just as thanos had to sacrifice gamora to get the soul stone the avengers may need to sacrifice someone as well right to uh, prevent him getting those well because otherwise it's a sitcom right avengers is like friends and everything gets reset uh, at the end of every episode uh which sounds like a fun show i'd watch actually, it actually yeah yeah uh <laughs> but uh but yeah if they have the stakes of like hey half the universe was destroyed and you know uh that felt really bad like we should keep something bad, something, there should be lasting effects. They can't really undo the whole thing. I, I mean, I think we're all kind of guessing like, all right, so you, you give up an Avenger. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay, That's the I payment. Uh-huh. I mean, I understand that as a story element, but if you have magic wishing stones that make you any wish you want, I feel like you try to give it the, you try to get the A plus and not the A minus or the B plus. Oh, you think it's an A minus to lose one person versus the half of the universe that died? Well, I, I would say an A minus is like, hey, I'll give you back a quarter of the universe. <laughs> that's like a 25% reduction for Sylvia. Well, that's not so bad. I yeah. wouldn't give it an A plus. 
<laughs> they I have give it so plus. many Avengers. Just give one away. Or one out of six ain't bad. You know, it's interesting. Someone brought this up to me that in Infinity War, there was that whole ongoing conversation between Vision and Captain America where Captain America said, we don't trade lives here. We're not in the business of trading lives. But maybe that could be something that Cap ends up having to change the tune on. Where he says, well, we don't give lives or we don't trade lives, but I will trade a life. Well, I'll they, trade my life. They pointed that out that he already did that. He's done that before in the first well, yeah, movie. Yeah, he jumped yeah. on the grenade. He's Yeah, he uh, dro- drove, drove the, the Valkyrie into the ice. And yeah, right. he's done that over and over again. So now it was already kind of a double standard that he was given a vision. Is is that setting up to uh, his final solution? Yeah, he's going to throw someone in Jumping on the grenade, grenade again. <laughs> someone else <laughs> on the grenade. <laughs> throw somebody. a vision on the grenade. It, yeah. uh, it also, I'll uh, remind us, uh, I don't know if you guys saw that quote by, is it St- Stephen Mc? Feely and yeah, and, uh, one of the writers and the other one. Vindu. So it's the two Marcus writers. McFeely, uh, yeah. Check out my Instagram at Philip Molina. You'll see a picture of me that I obsess about uh, with them. Uh, yeah, I had to mention that it was a picture with them. You almost <laughs> name drop, but you forgot one of their names. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, they had a quote recently that was like, "Hey, by the by, we're not just going to do that thing where Adam Warlock shows up and just fixes mm-hmm. everything. Uh, the characters you care about are the ones that are going to solve it. So I think that's even more indication that like, okay, so if it's Cap or Iron Man." the ones we care about basically Mm -hmm. uh then they're definitely gonna be sacrificing themselves in some way or something like that so if if you say characters i care about does that mean like wolverine mr fantastic human torch and Sherlock Holmes. But, yeah, why, <laughs> why not? Why, why not? Yeah, yeah uh, Maud Garrett. I'll keep, <laughs> just, I'll keep just, <laughs> That'd be crazy, right? Yeah, just yeah. Super confusing. Why did she hide this from us all this time? <laughs> She's a character. She knew. Yeah, I think this for me um, settles two concerns that I had going into Endgame. One concern being that it would just be too easy, that they, they wouldn't have any consequences, that they could just reset it. They're like, oh, they're all toys. It's like in comics sometimes where it's like, oh, no death really has stakes. It sounds like hopefully there will be stakes hopefully there will be some kind of major price being paid either a death or characters just being separated into different timelines and now cap and and uh, tony can't be in movies together uh who knows that's one concern the other concern i had was that another thing that would make it too easy being divine intervention i don't want like a cosmic force coming in i don't want a living tribunal oh, or oh, a just, eternity to, to come make in. it worse is my my opinion. Right, i'm yeah. down for like anything can happen to make things worse but the make things better and solve it needs to come from characters we already know and yeah you know uh so, ideally not some sort of device either where it's like oh my god the undoer button right yeah. there was a pixar story artist named emma coates who is great to follow on twitter because she has like a bunch of rules of storytelling that she goes by and all of pixar tries to abide by and one of her quotes is that accidents and coincidences can get your character into trouble mm-hmm. but they cannot get your character out of trouble so like if yeah as philip said if they if uh, some kind of weird coincidental thing can make a character's fate worse or their situation worse or make more trouble for them that's fine but they should have to get out of the problem themselves right. in their own that, ingenuity yeah, yeah. yeah luck can come into play as long as it's bad luck mm-hmm. yes yep yeah. That's a uh, much more condensed uh, version, yeah. Also, I want to give props to Disney and Marvel for just keeping everything as vague as possible going into this. I oh, like yeah. the, the whole like quote where they're like, we're going to try to use the first 15 minutes to cut our trailers. Maybe it, maybe like mm-hmm. first 30, but it's like, keep it. The movie is a surprise. Like the movie is genuinely a surprise. It's one of the biggest, it's like the biggest blockbuster they've done. Eh, maybe on par with Infinity War. But I, I like that we're kind of, we're being cagey a little bit. For that to make the movie extra special for the fans that have been watching it for this long, so yeah, on and board with that. First fifteen minutes, I mean, we're talking like it's not, it's not like the movie could be over three hours. That's not even like the first act of the movie. That's like <laughs> not even the first plot movement. That's, That's the just end like of the, the opening intro credits. graphic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. So. Before we move on to other news, mm-hmm. time for a trivia question. Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, fun as always. We're gonna ask each other a trivia question. Uh, the loser will have to join our uh, gift of shame community and. Uh, uh, if you're listening on a podcast, you'll just have to follow us on Twitter to see who lost and what, how embarrassing it looks for them to do this action. But for now, here's our question. Thanos is the short form of the Greek word thanaton, uh, thanatos, thanatos. 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 Thanks, Sam. Which means what? Okay, all of our answers are in the bucket. At the end of the episode, we'll reveal what the correct answer is. Uh, but for now, let's move on to some Game of Thrones news. Philip, what have you heard about this? Uh, so the, the I, 
the biggest thing this week, I guess, is just these Game of Thrones pictures that came out. Um, if you click Ooh. through them, a lot of them seem like they're kind of just production stills that are, you know, the kind that they have them posed for. But actually, if you look a little closer, there are some details here worth pointing out. So uh, we got over and analyzed the crap out of them, oh, like yeah. we Please always do. Oh, yeah. uh, so first off, we've got Jamie Lannister here, definitely just farted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> clearly, but no uh, one knows yet. <laughs> uh, you know, this, I, it's it's in the darkness of what seems to be Winterfell. So I think we can imagine that he's completed that journey to Winterfell. Um, he looks mm. pretty content. Uh, so he probably is fighting on their side, but also, I mean, maybe he's looking at a frolicking Brian, Brian of Tarth. Oh, Brian maybe? of Tarth. Oh yeah. That's reunion uh, yeah, on the, the way. I mean, look, he's, he's smitten. He's charmed, mm-hmm. smelling his own scent. Yeah. This is uh, not the expression must. I would expect Jamie to have coming back to Winterfell, right? Because this is his first time meeting Bran again after the moment. Maybe <laughs> that's, maybe that's who oh, he's yeah. seen he's right like, now. Hey, he's like, bud. I'm glad it didn't get better. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> even though we see that as a, c- a content face, if you're uh, listening to a podcast, he's just got kind of a smug smile. It's also the kind of face like, uh oh. Oh, <laughs> Did not screwed. expect to see the Sharon I, at the party. You know, <laughs> I thought you ran away. <laughs> yeah. oh, really. um, They're wearing the same thing. Totally, it's super yeah. awkward. What the only like bad moment I ever think with like besides Jamie being just kind of a dick in the begin in like the first yeah, couple awful. seasons, awful person. Uh, I I always think about like that one the funeral for for. Uh, Joffrey, and it's like that weird scene between him and uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, not good. And then besides Ugh, that, yikes, I felt like yeah. he was on a good trajectory. I always forget that yeah, he kicked a kid out of a tower. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we've had to deal with those consequences for the entire series. Yeah, I always forget about yeah. That. it's He's hard to remember every single character on Game of Thrones has kicked a child out of a tower. It's yeah, to you, keep they don't yeah. depict them all, but yeah, yeah but that's it's hard to remember. There's the uh, other pictures. Uh, we can kind of fly through them, but there's uh, shots of Varys who's wearing all black, um, which I just thought was interesting. Uh, John's there, Sam's there, Sansa's there, uh, Danny, Arya, Bran, and Davos. Uh, but the one I want to uh, focus on next, well, actually, sorry, their clothing all uh, just looks like they're all dressed more for winter, so it seems like a lot of them are in the north, and obviously oh, winter yeah. has come to Westeros. Okay, yeah, convert but, to the characters there. That's um, cool. But uh, they, I just want to confirm, do you guys think that, who do you guys think is where, basically? Who do you think has made it to Winterfell? The list of characters you just said, it sounds like they're all going to be there at least for just one. Anyone wearing debrief. dark, basically? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like winter's settled, settled over all over Westeros, right? Because we saw the snow dropping on King's Landing at the end of season seven. And uh, we have seen some brief teaser clips of Daenerys and her whole entourage arriving at Winterfell. Right. So we can assume anyone who is on uh, part of uh, Daenerys' delegation will be there as well. So Agreed. what I'm kind of like uh, teasing at is Cersei and her, and her look. A lot of people think her look mm. is kind of like a, a heavier cloth and, and darker. It's kind of a similar, but it doesn't seem so much like she's traveled. Uh, she does still seem to be at King's Landing, which would make sense. But the real thing that a lot of people are debating, and this isn't us making this up, this is people just ba- based on this picture, they're saying she looks pregnant. Uh, mm-hmm. And I could see it kind of going either way, but we do have to remember uh, that even though it's rude for us to assume that, <laughs> yeah. and we don't condone just jumping in and saying, hey, she looked pregnant. Uh, I'm going to remind us that that she said that she was to Jamie, and I remember you know, there was a lot of like debate about, is she lying? Is mm-hmm. she trying to manipulate him? Uh, I mean, if she is lying, if she is faking it, she, I mean, she could do that pillow move. You guys right. know that. Hello, 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 Hello. Hello. Dreyfus and Arrested Development. Where she yeah, had the Glee season bump. one, I think, also did <laughs> it. Also, Sam Basher. <laughs> I did it. it. Yeah. 19. It's easier to get in lines at Six Flags. But yeah, yes, excuse right. me, uh, pregnant <laughs> Sam coming through. We had that uh, baby shower for you and <laughs> didn't return our cribs. No, we didn't need to. Upset. So many cribs. Yeah. Uh, well, this could be con- confirmation that she is actually, and she wasn't lying about that, and... We should yeah, all just I mean, potentially on. it yeah. does, and also there there are issues with the prophecy about how many uh, children she would have. Oh, and there's always right, kind yeah. of like a, yeah. a weird uh, number misalignment with the number of kids she actually had. So yeah, you know they could be trying Very to deal with that. Uh, but then finally, there's this shot of Arya that I want to uh, check out. So she's got needle here, right. which is great. Um, but and she's also got the cat's paw dagger, uh, yes. which is the famous dagger that uh, uh, Littlefinger. Um, just had a very storied history with. Uh-huh. Um, but a couple things we want to point out about her. First of all, she's looking up kind of in amazement. Some people say maybe it's a, a dragon. 
I like to think it's a vigorously waving hot pie. Uh -huh. Just, I made it. Uh, but, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I somehow made it to Winterfell. Uh, but actually, the the most interesting thing to me is the person behind her. Ooh. This is uh, somewhat a svelte figure. <laughs> uh, uh, but it, uh, that wasn't a joke. I think they're svelte. Um, and I'm trying to like guess who that could be they've got this long hair this dark look mm. i'm throwing out there maybe jock and hagar oh mm. which would be really fascinating if, if uh um, the, you know the man uh who can look like anyone suddenly gets involved in the in this war and decided to not change his appearance at yeah. all it might be awkward though it's like inviting work friends and family friends <laughs> well he didn't leave party. things really well with uh or Arya just kind of walked away right and, yeah and it made um, him not a good term blind right uh, that was the last time we saw him was in that scene if i'm thinking i think correctly. so yeah and then in are decades. there any other guesses you guys have obviously the hound could be an option but again that's why i said svelte yeah. <laughs> unless he had a crazy summer but. That, no i'm i'm actually really on board with that with uh Jaquan. i think that'd be interesting just to kind of round out that story maybe give them some it, like any kind of closure maybe i don't even know if i need that for Arya's character but that they were together for kind of ish two seasons and on and off again throughout like earlier seasons as well why not round out that she's been with Jaquen I feel like almost more than the hound you can correct me you will but like it, <laughs> it, it feels like that to me thinking back on it uh, I'll have to rewatch the whole series before it premieres again. But I would be happy with that. Yeah, yeah. Eric, do you have any other guesses for his Ooh, birthday? I, I don't know. I was going to say uh, uh, a Mormont. You know, like, didn't she, like, Mage Mormont? But she's dead. That's why Leanna Mormont is now the... Uh, right. Because I'm just saying, because the hair is not, like, well-groomed. It's just kind of, like, all over. The, that's what I was thinking, maybe, the uh, hound. Earlier, you were, you also uh, were thinking maybe a Wildling. Oh, uh, yeah, like, maybe some other uh, Wildling person. Or just some kind of northern... Uh, uh, Lord or uh, lady or someone who's any other guesses at what she's looking at? Uh, I you guys said amazement. I'm I'm seeing a little glossed over where she's like half listening to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> um, I may you know what I this scene is probably seeing a dragon coming to Winterfell for the first time. That seems or, like a, the best guess. For I'll it. throw out there she's maybe studying John and Danny, right? And, and the influence that Danny is having over John. Yeah. Uh, final guess. Uh, Bran coming back from the future via time travel with the Terminator. Yeah. His sunglasses Skynet, on. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So that's cool a, new haircut. She has no way to really emote what that feels like. Yeah. But it would help against the White Walkers. Uh, cool. All those guesses are uh, equally True. valid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are the pictures. Uh, and if you guys see anything there, there might be like a Tarly or someone back there. Anything else, just let us know. And we, if it's uh, worthwhile, we'll dig in deeper. But tweet at us or something yeah. if you see something that we don't. Uh, what else we got? Well, we got some uh, Star Wars news this Ooh. week, right? What'd so uh, there were some rumors going around that Episode Nine, which is coming out in December of this year, will feature the Knights of Ren, uh, and that they'll be coming from a place called the Beyond. Now, taking the first part of that, that's exciting to hear this rumor that the Knights of Ren might come back. Ooh, ooh. They only showed up really in that Force Dream and the Force yeah. Awakens, and then uh, the Last Jedi didn't really address them at all. So we thought that they might just be done. But now J.J. Abrams is coming back, so we're like, oh, maybe. He he will want to bring back this this cool like piece of backstory, this mystery. Um, now, again, these are all rumors. This comes from a source called Making Star Wars, and it's kind of like a not I don't want to say gossip source or a gossip column, but they've been right about things in the past. So that's why we're kind of taking this seriously. Um, but the this whole idea of the beyond is what a lot of people have been asking about. What is it or where is it? Uh, well, there's some theories that it could be a place in the Outer Rim uh, that's just some kind of location that's unexplored uh, or the unexplored or the unknown regions. Uh, and that's just like a place where Kylo Ren sent them off to go investigate. And that's why they weren't in The Force Awakens, like in the main timeline or in, in The Last Jedi. Um, there's also uh, some rumors coming out that the Knights of Ren will return from the Beyond and that the Beyond will also be a source of some great threat that the Resistance and the First Order have to join forces to confront and battle. Um, again, rumors, this is just kind of sounds like broad plot movement that might happen in Episode Nine. Uh, and also, people are suggesting that the Beyond might be some kind of like dimension of Force energy uh, that could be like harmful to both sides because the Force is something that like goes both ways. Essentially, there's a light side and a dark side. Mm -hmm. Some people are also suggesting that the Beyond could be a form of like Force heaven. Like this could be the place where all the Force ghosts go and hang out when they're not visiting Luke or, or younger Jedi who are still alive. Um, it doesn't sound very threatening if that's right. the case, I unless there's some kind of like, plane. if it's some kind of like neutral afterlife, maybe, maybe there could be some kind of like big threat in that, in that sense. 
Um, and then the word beyond has showed up in Legends and in the EU before. Uh, there's this group called the Acolytes of the Beyond from the Aftermath books. Uh, they're like collectors of dark side artifacts. They, they were dealing with like um, Vader's old lightsaber. Mm-hmm. Um, so that could, maybe the word beyond could have been inspired in that way. You know, they do take some pieces of things from Legends. It, but they have been up to this point not really... Uh, focused on adapting specific storylines and characters from legends. It's more like they'll include them in, as Easter eggs and and character names and things like that. So, what do you guys think? I think that my like giddy childhood uh, brain is like, ooh, the Force Ghost. We get Yoda and everybody in their same place. And that sounds like awful when I, when I actually try to picture uh-huh. like what it would be like. And you were there and you were there. Like it actually, I'm hoping it's not land of the force ghosts. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, otherwise I think it, it would be cool if it's some sort of like, um, you know, what's on the other side of a black hole or something and just some sort of like uh, place that kills you just to transfer into it or something. Mm-hmm. Personally, I kind of hope they don't use beyond because star trek did that so it's like they, they already got that weird competition yeah, with it and like there, yeah. um <laughs> dumb brain idea first is that that's where the star trek universe is they come over we get a crossover in the next movie boom there that's a dumb idea better idea <laughs> is that the knights of Ren have been out training and recruiting and i would really like that idea because it's like there's so few people using the force and all these movies i just want like <laughs> i the the part of the prequels i liked is that there were just so many there yeah. was that, i mm-hmm. love that part of it um and to have like such a strong uh like sith army coming in like i know there's probably reasons why that can't happen i don't i'm not going to get into that but um i like the idea of them coming back with uh like a bigger f- recruitment of younger sith wielders or yeah. however Which you want to say it. I don't think they're technically Sith, but but no, G- not. I don't think so. But but, but, but essentially but, just uh wielders of the force yeah. for evil reasons. There you right. go. Yeah. Uh I would be on board with that. I feel like that would be fun just because also it opens the door to like even more things you could play around with. Like that like it's there's even further things out there and the force acts even stranger if we go further out and like there's different aspects of it that we haven't played with yet. That'd be kind of fun. Uh there was one other idea I wanted to say and if it uh, maybe if you, did you guys ever play the not insidious games but they are um blanking they were ps4 games where basically you could choose if you wanted to be a superhero good or bad and you could end up changing the app well the you games. could do that a couple of like like in starcraft you could you could play as different races yeah, and, and you somewhere do that in uh, one of the star whatever. wars games basically right? when you the old republic at, maybe? Mm-hmm. you could do that at the end of the game at the end of the second game you got to make a decision of like do we get rid of all powered people or do you become the thing that you oh hated? is that the one well they the famous ad campaign was when you could play as vader uh, in in oh uh, in uh, Battlefront you yeah, that, yeah and it was kind of like choose your side basically uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah but the, at the in the finale of that you were able to choose to wipe out basically all of the force or whatever gave people superpowers and I always thought that was kind of a fun idea where it's like hey if you kind of set up in the Last Jedi that you kind of want to get rid of all force things period mm-hmm. that was one of the ideas that was presented it's like maybe you went full into it and the beyond is something that could eradicate the use of which, the force which is an interesting existential threat that actually would have special stakes to star wars where you know a lot of people felt like oh these movies have felt like a repeat of the a previous trilogy and it's like well the dying out of the jedi is, has been done right but what right. about the magic that they tap into that dying out that's kind of interesting yeah, yeah I, it also could end it could just wrap up this whole like repeat of the empire again there's like it's the same like you said it's the same thing so bring them together on a common ground where they have to work together and then the the galaxy actually moves forward in a positive direction where they actually have to figure out how to make this work you know yeah. what i mean mm-hmm. well one thing i really liked about the last jedi was the way it explained the force in practical terms like it's just an energy that binds everything and there's a light side and a dark side there's violence and there's peace and they showed you know close ups of like um, a nest with a bunch of porgs in it and then like crashing waves and i like that depiction of the force as opposed to like the midichlorians from the prequels and i think the more we go down that rabbit hole and try to explore like the mysticism of it and create new like fantasy images and places it it gets too far away from what i think is so great about the the whole mythology of the force that george lucas created in the first movie it's 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 this mystical thing that almost feels like bs that just feels like 
uh, kind of a, a way that certain uh, crazy people see the world. And by the end of that movie, it's validated in the way that Luke can hear Obi-Wan's voice from beyond the grave, guarding him to, or guiding him to destroy the Death Star. And I think the more we start to pull that thread, the more the tapestry starts to fall apart. So I would hope that these just stay rumors or the beyond is just something else or there's like a character named the beyond that they've been working with and that's who they're coming back from rather than like uh, a, f- a form of heaven and we see what where force ghosts go. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, even the whole idea of force ghosts, the way that they appeared in um, Return of the Jedi kind of threw me a little bit. I'm not, I've never been crazy about like force ghosts coming back because I just like death being final and if it's just like Luke kind of hearing a voice in his head, that's okay to me. But if it's too like, if it gets too simple and then Yoda can come back at any time and talk to anyone at any time, it, it feels like, well, what are the stakes of that? You know, mm-hmm. did you ever really lose them? Yeah, though that said, it it does beg the question as soon as a force ghost exists and it's always ready to go, then it's like, where do they stay and, and lie in wait? Yeah. And then is that force heaven? I would, I always like the idea that they're just in the mind of the perceiver, you know, that Luke sees Yoda. Oh, and like Luke is, a, is a crazy person. Yeah. Luke is crazy <laughs> or his like connection with the force allows him to tap into these memories and those memories to have a form of AI of their own based off of their memories of their teachings and of their personality. And it's just really that form manifesting on its own, speaking back to them as opposed to something external. I like the idea that it's in their own mind and in their perception. Yeah, of the world. it's kind of like Kryptonian tech, right? Where you know, you can, yeah, yeah. Superman can have conversations with his parents, but they're not really there. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, well, we got some more uh, Star Wars <laughs> news from Anthony Daniels, who plays C three PO and does the voice of him in the in the new movies. Uh, oh, there's hello. like a couple tweets that are uh, kind of crazy. He initially tweeted earlier this week that uh, he had a big announcement. He was kind of acting like he was receiving a transmission and it's coming, and everyone got excited. Are we going to get a title reveal of Episode Nine? Everyone was pumped, and then he said that the, there was some kind of confusion on the uh, on the reception. And then the last thing he tweeted was that, uh, oh, it's coming in. It actually is coming in. T R A V. And then kind of cut off himself. And everyone's like, what the hell does this mean? Well, T R A V. Is is he hinting at what the title of the movie could be? Because one thing that people realize is that all Star Wars movies, all the titles, have begun with the letter T, the letter R, or the letter A. Like the, the previous uh, uh, seven that have come out. I guess if you include uh, Rogue One that works. I guess Solo, a Star Wars story, does not work in that. But if you consider the, the main chapters of the Star Wars movies, they're all T-R-R-A, so does that mean V will be the first letter of the title of Episode Nine? Yeah, I'm, I don't think it's that. Yeah, I don't think it's that either. <laughs> yeah. I think it's nonsense. I th- well, <laughs> it, it does, yeah. It does seem like he was in the suit for too long and his brain cooked. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Tunisia, right? It's like he's out in the, the, yeah, the exactly, hottest like, of the hot suns. He sounds like he's he's dying <laughs> and he's tweeting for help. He's uh, probably a life alert mix up there and he was yeah, typing Yeah, I know. Else. Like, look at him. He, <laughs> he's having a great time. He's smiling. He looks like... He like, seems it, fine. He looks like if the C-3PO suit was like a Play-Doh cat and he's just done it too many times and now he's starting to like shape his oh, look at his brain look at it oh you can't God. see this on the I podcast can, mm. i can hear the tweets i can hear the tweets coming in <laughs> <laughs> right now if, from if, him if it were a v, all of the jumbled tweets uh if, yeah. it, if it were a v though y'all got pitches <laughs> uh, uh, v names vader uh, legacy vader returns vader ain't done <laughs> Vader's back. We can yeah. have Vaders. We ooh, yeah. sorry. We can have Vaders. There's uh, T R A V. Some people are saying T R A V could be the the letters of the words of it. So like, or maybe it's the it's initials. a phrase that he's saying. Like T R A V could be like title yeah. reveal after Valentine's Day. So and or why, yeah. title reveal after Valentine's Day, or if it is the title like the revenge. The return, uh, yeah, the return. Av, av Vader. Av Vader. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's a good title. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, also- I, but I don't think it is a title reveal. I, I, some people are even thinking it's just as simple as like uh, releasing the movies in 4K. And there's just some really right, convoluted yeah. way of announcing that. Um, I think it is something maybe more in that direction, a little further away from title reveal or trailer. But I also, I'm telling you, like someone check on this guy like <laughs> like they don't make any sense any of these tweets with themselves uh, maybe he's just it's a joke that'll all become clear later like Travolta is gonna be in it or Travi travel Claus. Star Wars cruises and it's a Star Wars fan cruise because they do that for Back to the Future they do that for Star Trek it's definitely a Star Wars cruise boom 
tiny brain cooked rabbits <laughs> ain't very vegans. Oh, pretty good. These are good ideas. Yeah. Well, we solved it. <laughs> You're welcome. Debunked. <laughs> well, let us know in the comments below what uh, you think the TRAV this might poor name old man. or what these tweets <laughs> could be referring to. But some other stuff came out this week. Sam, what have you heard? May I please? Thank you. And I'm excited. Let's talk about in other news, Chris Pratt. Handsome man confirms that Guardians of the Galaxy three will use James Gunn's script. Uh-huh. That's been uh, that's been the word around town, and good to get a little confirmation. Confirmed like the third time in a row. We also know, know that James the Gunn feels about that. Uh, we also know that the epic show Pennyworth, the Batman prequel about Alfred, his butler, will apparently be an quote unhinged R rated series Uh-oh. set in the nineteen sixties and featuring a descendant of Jack the Ripper as Ooh. his main antagonist, or at least as far as we know, and also will not feature any Batman villains I like as that. of right now. Little Jake the Ripper. Jake Lloyd. Um, <laughs> also there's a rumor that Avengers Endgame could have a runtime of three Whole hours. That's it? Make there it was, longer. There was even a little rumor of an intermission, which yes. uh, please, because yeah. I need to pee. I pee every fifteen minutes. It'll uh, just like check in on like Scarlet Witch, and it's like there's like a little message. You can go to the bathroom. Or <laughs> there's like sand from from an hourglass, but it looks like the dust of the dead people. Oh, uh, there, there just like you Peter go. Peter Parker's eyeball. Going there through. you go. Yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> also, Robert Pattinson is reportedly being considered mm. to replace Ooh. Ben Affleck as mm. Batman in Matt Reeves' The Batman. Oh. Oh, okay. Man, I really like it. Our him. audio listeners love this story. That the, the, Batman? the Batman? Batman is the Batman. who we're talking about. Right oh, now. Yeah, the Batman. Really? Yeah. Batman. Jason Batman. Yeah, it's the same guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I'm really on board with this. He's got done a lot of amazing roles. Lost City of Zed, Good Times. I'm 100% on board Cedric with this. Diggory. There you go. Mm-hmm. Twilight. Very good. What? Also, uh, finally, a hey, first one was okay. Uh, and Taika Waititi will not be directing Guardians 3, saying, oh. uh, this is his quote, Going into something like that, which has got uh, which has got his stamp all over it, would feel like going to someone someone's house and going, "Hey, I'm your new dad, and this is how we make peanut butter sandwiches." Now, it just feels kind of awkward. Yeah, interesting mm-hmm. response because that's like you the, know, it's James Gunn's baby, and we would want Taika Waititi. Seems like the best person to take it over. Kinda. I think it's just people are like, "Oh, a mar- funny Marvel director," and so mm-hmm. they wanted to. And he did a funny space movie that. that's colorful, yeah. which to me is a great reason to not have him do that. You know what I mean? Like oh, he's so? got his. Mm-hmm. Let him do his. I get, okay. I get the appeal, but I'm glad that he. You know, put a stamp on. It. He's like, "Nah, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be making uh, what we do in the shadows uh, TV series, which I'm very excited about. What I'm also excited for is our lightning round because they, I know uh-huh. we got many good questions. And well, before we get to that, we have one more announcement that we want to give you oh, guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we mentioned The Walking Dead earlier. We will actually be resuming our coverage of The Walking Dead Walking season Dead nine. Breakdowns coming so we back. Had, we had to stop at the beginning of season nine. Just there was a lot of reasons why. At the end of the day, we just couldn't really afford to do it. We had a lot of other things we're I trying mean, to do. Just straight up, we we were losing money. We yeah. were on, on those, and it, it was just killing us. <laughs> it was. It was. And uh, the great news is, there's a streaming service called. Philo, who reached out to us and they're like, look, we're going to hook you guys up. We want to sponsor you to keep doing these breakdowns. And they are a great streaming service. They have AMC content as well as like a ton of other, like 50 different channels they have like Comedy Central and MTV, Nickelodeon. It's like all the things that like if you are cutting the cord and you're just trying to live off of different like streaming services, uh, I feel like the ones that aren't covered by anything, Philo covers. So now you can like finally completely cut the cord. You don't have to deal with the stupid cable package that you've been dealing with. You can just go through Philo, and they you can save as much as like as much as you want. There's no limits on how much you save, uh, and you can go back and catch up on uh, Better Call Saul, The Walking Dead, the Comedy Central shows. It's it's awesome, and they're they're helping us out with uh, yeah with bringing make, back our episodes. Us make the Walking Walking Dead breakdowns. Yeah. Uh, we'll put a link here um, for uh, signing up if you're interested uh, on getting getting AMC and all these other channels uh, streaming. Um, if you use our service, I think they're doing the week for free or something. But if you use our link, follow that link. Um, Philo, thank you so much for bringing back our Walking Dead breakdowns. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I think you guys uh, will be real excited. On Monday after the season nine premiere, uh, which airs Sunday on AMC, uh, on Monday we will have our, our breakdown and review and in-depth analysis. Uh, and season nine, if you guys have been keeping up with season nine, it's been a lot better. It's been like a step forward. Uh, like the whispers are now part of the show. Um, like there's been a new showrunner and like it, it's really like 
been in a better position these past nine episodes and I'm glad we get to talk about it again and uh, hopefully you guys hopefully this breakdown series will do well because we'd love to keep doing this for all of season nine for what's left but now yeah let's move on to the lightning round lightning right? round <laughs> lightning, lightning, lightning round somebody create a lightning round theme song for us and we'll maybe use it lightning round alright Sam uh, at Swatomar do you think uh, an homage to Stanley on future at Mar- uh, Marvel movies should be done through CGI like Leia or like the way they mm. did it in Deadpool with the gra- graffiti or a poster or maybe even a clever name drop Deadpool. you know a real clever name drop uh, yeah Deadpool <laughs> do a picture don't please don't do that to that poor man yeah, no, yeah, no, no CGI I like the, yeah. the name drop where it's just a guy named Stanley and they're yeah. like get it <laughs> hey, alright uh, Eric Wait. at Arestia Jante uh, what's your favorite end game fan theory going around at the moment ooh um, my favorite fan theory going around is uh, uh, the craziest one I think that Loki uh, turned himself into the Hulk and that Loki's still alive and I, that's that's I think it's continues to be the craziest <sighs> one and it's my favorite and will always be the favorite and, and there's no way it's going to be correct when Endgame comes out <laughs> it's just so funny if he's like been oh, anyway yeah he's been pretending uh, yeah, to be Bruce Banner time. for the whole yeah. time yeah uh, it's great uh, Philip uh, at Santos J Black if while in Westeros you had to choose the champion to fight in your place in a trial by combat who would you choose and why I mean it's obvious that it should be Jacques Nagar because he doesn't lose those things but I'm still going to say the Viper yeah he's, he's such a fun fighter and it's such a satisfying pop uh, <laughs> Sam uh, at Waz HP uh, do you reckon Theon will sacrifice himself to save his sister Yara and if so do you think this will be a quote good ending for him it will I have been tired of his character for a hot minute so I hope that's how it goes hope sister ends up okay and I you know what yes it'll be a fine ending for him Redemption story, yes. Uh, redemption song. Uh, Eric at FD Velocity. Do you think hey. the green dragon glass that John saw in Hard Home will play a part? In Hard Home, um. Mm, I think they left everything in Hard Home behind. That's an interesting theory, but I don't think it'll play a part. Yeah, though not saying that Dragon Glass won't play a part. Dragon Glass, of course, it will play yeah. a part. That particular uh, one. Philip no. at Maoist Hedgehog. Uh, what are the chances that Ned Stark is still actually John's dad? Gross. Yeah. Uh, Sam. Uh, Sam uh, uh, so not not likely. Yeah. Uh, Sam uh, at Screenplay. Uh, who is the best fighter in Game of Thrones, living or dead? Uh. 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 Kind of similar well, to my question. Well, I'm <laughs> yeah. gonna with that. But, but, uh huh. Bro, the Rountain. Uh, <laughs> pull up, uh, at True Scorn. True Scorn. Uh, other than dragons, what mythical beast would you like to see brought to life on Game of Thrones? I almost said narwhals, but those are real. <laughs> those are definitely real. <laughs> but a lot they are of people real. don't think that yeah. they're real animals. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, something crazy. Uh, sea lions. Uh, Eric. <laughs> also uh, real. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at Sansa's Dove. Uh, do you think hey. Baby Sam, being the brother of so many White Walkers, could possibly turn into one? Oh, um, isn't he already a... Oh, 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 Baby, baby Sam. Sam. Oh, his, his Sam. Um, ooh, um, that... I think that will be a threat. I think that baby will get taken by White Walkers at some point. That's Ooh, a theory I'm going to put out there. Um, but I don't think he'll turn into one. But that will be like a, a quest that the characters have to go under to make sure that baby doesn't get turned into a White Walker. I like that you kind of made it sound like it's the baby's choice like yeah. about whether or not he decides. <laughs> uh, present yeah. your cases. Uh, okay, everybody. Uh, at Underpants Gnome, if Ikea made the Iron Throne, what would they call it? Uh, Swargen chair? S- S- Sam, it's okay. <laughs> you don't, you... I don't know Swedish. <laughs> don't know Swedish. Yeah. Even Swedes don't know Swedish. Flurfin. Yeah. Flurfin. Flurfin. Let's go with Flurfin. Furdy, furdy, furdy. You're welcome. Flurfin. That has been Flurfin. Lightning Round. Wow. Make sure to tweet oh. at us uh, at New Rockstars if you want to be included in our Lightning Round. And thanks for sending us those questions. But now comes the time for a 15 second shout out. Boom, Each boom. of us has 15 seconds to shout out, ramble, or plug, anything we want. Sam, you got something? Yes. Uh, if for podcast listeners, thank you for joining us on the Himalaya app. Appreciate it. But you can also check out David Tennant does a podcast with dot, dot, dot. And then he brings on a guest. And they are delightful out of celebrities bringing on other celebrities to talk about celebrity things that has been the most delightful listen so far Great. go listen to it philip uh what am i into right now uh the brilliant light switch uh look it up it's called brilliant it's a cool light switch replacement brilliant light switch i'm not being paid by them brilliant 
<laughs> you should be. Uh, for my 15 seconds, thank you all to, who came out to our first Darkest Timeline yeah, comedy last fun. week. Philip was there and Maude and Tommy were there too. I Sam, was out of town. In the future, we'll, we'll hopefully be there. Uh, it was a lot of fun and uh, we'll do that every first Friday of the month. For uh, next Friday, the 15th, uh, I'll be doing a, a sketch show with my uh, sketch team, Dad Jeans, at that theater. It'll be a whole different type of thing. We're doing different uh, material. You'll get to see me act, actually. It's going to be a really funny show. So if you're in the LA area, come check that out. Uh, or just come to the Acme Theater every Friday night. There's always good stuff there. Um, great. So let's return to our trivia question that we asked earlier. Boom, boom. Uh, we now know what the answer is. A loser, as decided by our judges, will have to uh, join the, the GIF of Shame Society. Uh, to if you're listening on a podcast, remember to check out and follow us on our socials so you can see our shameful GIFs. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, to remind everyone of what the question was, Thanos is the short form of the Greek word Thanatos, which Thanatos. means what? Uh, let's see what we said. Uh, Sam says death to the heart power. He put a little heart above oh, it. No, the heart which is for you, Philip. Oh, thank you. How do you know I was going to read it? Well, death. There you death go. is also for me. Death. There you go. Uh, Philip says destroyer. <gasps> mm. Oh, and uh, Eric says conqueror. Well, the correct answer was death, meaning Sam, Sam is our winner this week. Go. Congrats, Sam. How did you know that? Did you take <laughs> Greek? At any point? Venture Brothers. Venture Brothers taught me that. Oh. Thanks, Venture Brothers. Gotcha. And then mm -hmm. judges who's closer, uh, Destroyer or Conqueror? Well, Destroyer starts with E. Yeah. I e. D. <laughs> uh, so that means I am safe this week, finally. And uh, uh, Eric loses. Uh, Eric so loses. that's me. I'm Eric. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to do one of these goofy things. And then uh, Sam's going to read our goodbyes. Uh, so here's what I have to do. Uh, an Avengers Endgame trailer just dropped, but your computer is buffering. Oh, Ooh, ain't I've that been the in worst. that position before? Uh, okay, so I'm gonna do that uh, just right here. Let's um, clear the screen for him. If you're listening, uh, Eric is getting ready to oh, yeah. be full of shame. This is my favorite part of the podcast. I'll tell you what. This is uh, this is pretty fun. Yes, uh, don't worry. You can go ahead and check out at New Rockstars on Twitter to make sure you watch all of. The hilarity ensue, but you know what, gang? Let's say thank you for watching or listening to this week's episode of New Rockstars News. I want to thank our hosts, me up top at Sam Basher, because I'm the winner. I get first place. Philip Molina at FEMO and Eric Voss at EA Voss. Remember that this is also available in audio form and video form. Videos at youtube.com slash new rockstars, and you get the audio anywhere you get your podcast. But if you use the Himalaya app, you can actually leave a comment on the podcast and it supports the show directly. I love it. Comment and tweet us at New Rockstars. Like I said previously, like this video and podcast, share it around and subscribe to Rockstars for deep dives into the stuff you love. See you next week. Goodbye. Mm, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I was not watching. Sorry, I didn't see it. Looked like it was fun. He liked it. <laughs> he giggled. <laughs>